Welcome to Dr. BT's Chemistry Essentials, A-Level Chemistry Made Easy. In this video, we're going to be looking at strong acid calculations, but this time involving when we've got dilutions of a specific acid. If you find in this video useful, ensure that you like it, ensure that you subscribe to the channel, and then also please leave a comment for the next videos that you want to see. Now, it is worth noting that there is a video in the Year 1 playlist called Solutions Part 3, Dilution C1V1 equals C2V2 Calculations. And that's going to be really important as a foundation for the types of questions we're doing today. So if you've not seen that video before or not done any work of that in your own classes, I would go and watch that before carrying on with this video. So in the previous video on strong acid calculations, we made a distinction between the two different strengths of acids. We have strong acids that are designated with HA, where A is rest of the acid, and that fully ionizes into H plus and A minus when in solution. So with that, we said that whatever the concentration of the strong acid that you put in is, you'd get exactly the same concentration of H plus, hydrogen plus ions, if the acid is monobasic or monoprotic. And two examples here are hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. So whatever the molarity or the concentration of this is, will give you the exact same concentration of hydrogen plus ions in solution. On the reverse, Weak acids have a reversible arrow, and this means they're partially ionized. This is more complicated, and in subsequent videos, we'll be going through that. We then started to outline the relationship between the concentration of the acid, HA, that you originally put in solution for a strong acid, and how that affects the concentration of the hydrogen ions. And for strong acids, all we need to look at is the molar ratios from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, of the equation that will allow us to work out the relationship between these two. So for monoprotic, it's the simplest because this concentration will be exactly the same here. And then we start to outline the relationship between hydrogen ion concentration and pH. And in the relationship of hydrogen plus ions, to get pH, we do the minus log of this concentration, and that's one of our key equations. And in the reverse, if we want to find hydrogen ion concentration from a given pH, then all we do is the opposite of the minus log, which is to the power of 10 minus the pH value given. And that will give us this. And then we can work backwards and work out the concentration of the acid. So we're going to use these principles today, but we're going to start to look at the idea of diluting this acid and how we deal with those types of questions. So here is a typical dilution strong acid calculation. I'm going to give you a second to read this. Now, we can follow our six steps for any calculation and apply it to pH calculations. So what we need to do is understand first in boxing the, the actual target, the goal, well, that's the pH when we've got a diluted amount of the hydrochloric acid. So we box that. We need to underline any given values and annotate what they are. Here we have V1, where 1 is the initial before dilution. And then the concentration given, again, is initially before dilution. And then we're told that this acid, hydrochloric acid, is diluted to 150 centimetre cubed. So this has allowed us to basically work out what we need to work out and what we're given. So we've ticked off the first step whenever you approach a question. And annotating it is really powerful because it helps navigate where you've got to go next and to write the equations of what you would need in order to solve this problem. So knowing that the end game is to work out pH, we're going to put the link between pH and hydrogen plus concentration. So we're going to be working out pH at the end. We've been given information around the concentration of HCl. So we know the path we're going to take is first working out the hydrogen plus concentration 
and then working out pH. So that's going to be really key. And the thing that links these two together is the molar ratio. So we're going to draw out the actual chemical equation for the ionization of this strong acid, HCl. The other equation that we need is we know we've got some sort of dilution, okay? And this is where, having watched the year one video on dilution C1V1, C2V2 comes into play, because that's the other equation that we're going to need. And this is referring, these values are all referring to HCl, hence why I've laid it out like this. So there we've got our two main equations for this. So now what we need to do is check the units of any given values. So they're the ones we've underlined in step one. Now, moles per decimeter cubed is perfect. That's exactly what we need for square brackets type work because square brackets means moles per decimeter cubed. So we're absolutely fine with that. Then we've got centimeters cubed here. Now, usually you might think, well, hold on, this is in decimeter cubed. We need to convert this. But this equation here is a ratio of two volumes. So as long as those two volumes are the same units, it's absolutely fine. I mean, there's no harm in converting these into decimeters cubed. However, it will give you exactly the same answer. So let's not create any more work than we need to. So we've checked the units. We know what purpose our equations are playing. So we're happy with that. So the next thing is to rearrange the equations for something that is useful. So because the question is asking us to work out the pH on dilution, we know that if we're working out the pH on dilution, we need the hydrogen plus ions on dilution and therefore the HCl concentration on dilution. This is C2, okay? The concentration finally on dilution. So we're going to first of all rearrange this equation. And what we've done is made C2 the term. So we've basically moved the V2 over to become a division. And then once we've got this, this concentration on dilution, then we're going to work out the concentration of the hydrogen ions and then use that to work out the pH using this equation. So we're just going to write that down as well. So this here is just telling us that on dilution, whatever that concentration we worked out is, will give us the concentration of H plus because it's a one-to-one -one ratio on our chemical equation of ionization. And then once we've got this value, we substitute that into the pH equation. We've rearranged the equations. Now we just need to substitute in any given values. So first, we've just taken the given values here to work out the concentration of HCl. If we put this into a calculator, we get 0 0.033. This is sensible because when we think about it, we have diluted the sample. So it was initially 0.1, it's become 0.03. Also, some of you might notice we've almost basically diluted it by three times. And then we know that the concentration of HCl will give the concentration of hydrogen plus ions because it's strong acid in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now starting to calculate our answer. So then when we put that into the calculator, minus log 0.033, we get the answer to remember two decimal places, because all pH should be in two decimal places, as 1.48. And this is sensible and a quick check. Think about it. You're using hydrochloric acid, so it's going to be an acidic, a very acidic pH or low pH. Okay, so here are two questions that I want you to have a go at using that six step approach and the ideas talked about in that worked example. So pause the video here and have a go. Okay, so the answer's coming up. And if you didn't get these right, then I'm going to very quickly go through exactly how to approach the question. So we're just going to box that we're working out the pH and underline the given values. Then I'm just putting the thing that links these different terms together. And the thing that links the sulfuric acid and the H plus together is this equation of ionization for this strong acid that is not monoprotic. It's diprotic, releases two hydrogens for every one H2SO4. And then the other equation that we need as we're dealing with a dilution, is the C1V1 equals C2V2. 
Then we rearrange the equation for exactly what we need. Well, we're working out the pH on dilution. So we need the concentration of our sulfuric acid on dilution, which will then allow us to get the concentration of hydrogen ions on dilution, which then allows us to get the pH on dilution. Now, because when we work out this concentration on dilution of the sulfuric acid, this will not equate the hydrogen ion concentration because it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So whatever the value of this is, we need to multiply by 2. Because if you look at the ratio here, if you need to get from 1 to 2, you need to times by 2. So our concentration, what we work out here, the C2H2SO4, we're also going to have to times by 2 in order to get our concentration of H plus ions on solution, on dilution. Then we would then use the pH equation, pH equals minus log H plus, where that H plus is going to be the value when we multiply this value by 2. So then we're just going to substitute in any given values, and they're all good as they stand. So there's our C1, our V1, and our V2. When we put that into a calculator, we get the answer of 0.4. But as that is the concentration of the sulfuric acid on dilution, again, it's less than the 2, so that kind of makes logical sense. The hydrogen ion concentration is twice the amount here because of our equation. So that's going to be 0 0.80. And so then what we do is we put this into our equation and then we get the answer of 0 0.0969. But obviously we need to get it to two decimal places. So we're just going to get this to be 0 0.10 on rounding up. So the second question, we are given something slightly different. And the reason I'm not underlined this 250 centimetre cube yet is because it's been added to 50 centimetre cube. So we need to do a manipulation here because for it to be useful, we want to work out V2, the final solution. And that's going to be 250 plus the 50 because you're adding them together to make the new volume. So this gives us 200, uh, sorry, 300 centimetres cubed as the new V2 of our volume of the whole solution, which also contains the nitric acid. Then we've got our equations that we need to use. So we're just linking nitric acid to hydrogen ion concentration to pH. Units of that given are all okay because both the volumes are in the same unit. That's fine in terms of this equation. We don't need to make it into decimal cubed. So now we're going to rearrange the equations. So we're trying to work out the concentration of the nitric acid on dilution to 300 centimeter cubed. And then we know because of the fact that nitric acid is a monoprotic acid, that therefore the concentration of C2 nitric acid is going to be exactly the same as the concentration of H+. And so we can use that in our equation that pH equals minus log H+. So now we just need to add in our different values. And if it's easy, then what you just want to do is just tick those off that you've used. Then obviously our final value is not 250. Remember, we've added 250 to 50, so we've got 300. So that's our V2, that's 300. We put that into the calculator and we get 0 0.033. This is exactly the same as the concentration of the H plus ions because we've got a one to one ratio on the ionization. And then you put that into the pH equation and you get the answer of 1.48. So we finish on an exam question now involving strong acids and dilution questions. It may look slightly different to those that you've just done. However, use the underlying principles that we've worked on in order to guide you through this. So pause the video now and have a go. Okay, if the answer you obtained was C, 4.1, then you've got the correct answer.
So the way we go about this is we need to treat HA and HB as two separate acids that are undergoing dilution. And what we want to do is basically work out HA on dilution. We're going to call C2 HA. And then we want to work out the concentration C2 of HB on dilution also. Then with those two in mind, we can work out the concentration of the hydrogen plus ions because both HA and HB will ionize into this. And we'll talk about that in a second when we just do the equations. But the values that we've been given that we're going to underline, as always with our first step, are as follows. We've been given the initial volumes of both HA and HB and their initial concentrations. So this is going to help us in our second step, which is always to write out the equations that we need, etc. So obviously we're not having to work out pH, unlike other questions, but what we are having to work out is C2. Once we've got that concentration of the HA, for example, we can work out the concentration of H plus ions, because it's a strong acid on dissociation, and exactly the same process for HB. Once we work out the concentration on dilution, we can work out the hydrogen ions formed on ionization. And then these two combined will give us our overall H plus concentration. So really, we're just looking at the contribution that HA and separate HB make, adding them together to give us the answer. So now what we need to do is just check the units of any given values. And again, whilst these are different in terms of their volume, we've said that with these types of equations, it's absolutely fine as long as both the volumes are in the same format, centimeter cube will work. And then therefore we move on to rearranging the equations as we need them, which we've done there. So it's just the C2 dilution that we need for this. Then what we need to do is substitute in the given values. And let's, there's a lot going on here. So let's tick them off as we go through. Now V2 is going to be the addition of 25 mixing with 45 solution. The same for HB. And again, the V2 is 25 plus 45 because that's also been diluted by mixing these two together. Then what we are, we're in a position now to calculate the concentration of both HA and HB. Starting with HA, we know that the concentration of HA is 2.1428 and it's a one-to-one -one ratio in the ionization because it's a monobasic acid as we've been told. So that concentration H plus is exactly the same. Then we do the same for HB and the answer to this is 1.928. So again, because it's monobasic as given in the question, we've got that. Then all that remains is that we add these two values together. That's what we get in the calculator. And so you can round that up to the nearest one decimal place and 4.1 is the right answer. So this is a slightly different approach. However, you can see how understanding the principles of dilution of solutions allows you to get that answer. If we were then to ask to work out the pH, then we would obviously use pH is minus log H plus. But that's why we're always keen on working out the hydrogen ion concentration. So that concludes our video looking at specific part of strong acid calculations involving dilutions and the C1, V1, C2, V2 um, equation. If you found this video useful, ensure that you like it. Um, ensure that you subscribe to the channel for new videos as and when they're uploaded. And then also leave comments on the videos for those new videos and topic areas that you're struggling with and that you'd like me to explain.